there again with Greg Martin of Our Programming 101. And in this segment, we like to get together and talk about some of the things we've learned lately in our favorite programming language, R. How you doing, Greg? Great, Andrew. Good to see you. And always good to be here with you. I always learn a lot from you. Same These here. sessions are some of my favorite. And I know the people that watch my channel watch your channel. So let's do this. Yeah. I, uh, we always say we're going to do this more. And then it always ends up being just that the the craziness of life gets in the way and we only get to do it a few times a year. So we'll once again say let's do it more often. Um, what are you going to show us today? Well, um, let me just share my screen. And there's something quite exciting I want to I want to share with you. Okay, so we've talked before about Quarto. And what I've got on the screen at the moment is on the left-hand side, there's code. And actually, there's more than code. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. And on the right-hand side, there's an HTML output. And this is the beauty oh, nice. of Quarto. Quarto is, and I don't know if we've said this uh, in, in our conversations, but I know both of us have talked about Quarto on our respective channels. Quarto is like a text editor that you can add chunks of R code into, and that R code will render into HTML or a Word document or a PDF or whatever output you want, even, even a PowerPoint presentation. Now, here on the left-hand side, we've got an example of Quarto. And I'm working in R Studio, by the way, if, if it doesn't look familiar. Oh, nice. It's just a little different from the way R Studio usually looks. At the top, there's just a, it says the title of this is tutorial, my name's author, the format HTML, that could be PDF, that could be a Word document. And then there's this reference.bib and, and you're going to understand exactly why I've got that there a little later because we've actually got a bibliography that Quarto can create, which I love. Okay, here, this is this is how it just works like a regular word processor. We've typed in, I've got a heading, YouTube lesson, collaboration, boom, shakalaka. Now, <laughs> you can see on the right-hand side, it's it's similar. This is the rendered version of this and, and it's turned it into some H, an HTML file and uh -huh. there's a little difference. And you can see here, I've got some code in a chunk mm -hmm. and it's library tidyverse. So this is, you know, we would usually do this when we write code. We say we're using the tidyverse set of packages, but you're not seeing that on the right-hand side in the rendered document. And the reason you're not seeing it is this clever little bit of code up here that you put just after the R, echo equals false, which means it's not going to, it's not going to put the code that you've typed in into the document that you're rendering. You might want that code in there, in which case you don't put in echo equals false. And then message equals false, uh, it basically, and I'm going to illustrate what this does. Because you know, when you run code often in, in the console, it'll, it'll give you messaging. Yeah. If I delete this, I'm going to delete all of that. And I'm going to re-render this. And you'll see in a few seconds on the right-hand side, it creates a new version of this, this HTML document. But without that, without those two little qualifiers, and you can see now it's included the code and it's included a message. Okay, so that's yeah. that's a nice example of how the, those two little qualifiers work. Next thing I've got, let's create a graphic um, and give it a label and a caption. Okay, so here's the graphic that we're gonna create. Again, we've said echo equals false, message equals false. Now I've got label equals fig dash Star Wars. I'm just gonna call this figure Star Wars, but the label is important because later on in our document, we're going to be able to refer to the same figure and have an HTML link that'll take us back to that figure anywhere in the document. So that's a really nice little feature. And then fig.cap, uh, this is just a caption that you're going to put at the bottom of the, of, of the figure relationship between height and mass of Star Wars characters. And here you go. Uh, the, here it renders Star Wars characters. At the top of this is the heading that I just created in the code itself. But the caption at the bottom, figure one, relationship between height and mass of Star Wars characters. And there's this little figure that I've drawn. I'm not going to go through this R code now, this because this lesson isn't about ggplot. But you know, happy days. We love ggplot. Then I say um, we're going to add in some meaningless text, and I've just got some <laughs> jibber jabber, jibber jabber, jibber jabber, jibber jabber. And down here, I've got let's make a reference to at and then fig Star Wars. Remember we had that label a little earlier. So if I, in the render document, if I scroll down past the jibber jabber, here you go, figure one. So Quarto knows that this is the first of our figures. So it's given it a numeric value. And if I created another figure, it would call it figure two, et cetera, et cetera. And if you moved them around in the document, it would always keep the order right. So now if I click on this, this is a hyperlink, takes us back to that particular figure. So you can imagine in a large document, that is an incredibly useful feature. Yeah. The last thing I want to show you, has some more meaningless tests, jibber, jabber, jibber, jabber. <laughs> I want to add some references. 
So if I wanted to add some citations to academic papers, it's as easy as you pop them in there. And let me, I'll actually show you, it's, it's, it's super easy. I'll add another one at the end over here. Yeah. And it's really as easy as insert. Yeah. And we can go to citation. I would use PubMed because I'm in the medical field. I might do a search for, I'll put in my name. That's great. Uh, and uh, global health. And so, and you can put in obviously a more complicated amazing. You know, search, search than that. Uh, and then you you select this. Now I need to get a little bit of space here so I can, I can push the little plus button, push plus, uh, insert, and it's popped that reference in there. Okay. And then when we render this, you can see if we go to the bottom, it's got those citations. It, I haven't re-rendered, so I haven't seen the new one that popped in there, but the old ones, the old, old ones, it pops them into a reference or a bibliography right at the bottom. Boom shaka like a absolutely gorgeous. So that's my short introduction to Quarto. I absolutely love it. It means it it is what we call sort of a rep replicatable document. Yeah. You can create one report, and as your data gets updated, you just push render. And the entire thing gets updated with the graphics and the tables and everything that you want pointed at the new set of data, but all of the text, et cetera, et cetera, is standardized. So um, absolutely love it. I love that so much. I have um, one collaborator in um, in field botany because my primary work is in floristic quality. And um, he's working in Word documents all the time and managing his references just manually and thinking oh. about you know, APA oh, style or Chicago style or whatever, and what gets italicized and what doesn't. And I haven't tried to think about those things in years because things like R and LaTeX will handle that kind of typesetting for you. And all you have to think about is who's the author, who is the, mm -hmm. what is the journal and so on. Now, exactly. here's the really important question, Greg. Do you speak Latin? I do not. <laughs> where's, this Latin? What's the, where's the Latin coming from? I've seen this before, I think. Uh, which which Latin is this? Well, this if is... you go back to um your your face oh. your space filling stuff, the lorem ipsum. Oh, you know what that is. You can if you if you do a Google search for meaningless text. Yeah, it will produce as much as you want. You can ask it for as much as you want. I just asked for one paragraph and okay. I just paste it again and again and again. But you can ask for any amount of meaningless text. Yeah, and it's just a filler. It's great. It's <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even know if it was Latin or if it's just uh, I. I have, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Latin. I've seen this before in, um, in LaTeX documents. It is also that exact paragraph is used as filler in yeah. um, like journal templates that you'll see. And I'm trying to think where else I, I, at one point I looked up what it was and I just don't remember. Somebody will put it in the comments and let us There's know word for it. Yeah. where There's it comes word from. It. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's a quote from somebody and it's meaningless text. Yeah, absolutely. Meaningless text. Exactly. We'll okay, I'm going to push stop sharing. Okay. And uh, maybe I'll show you something that I've uh, yeah. been playing with lately. If I can find my uh, my favorite, my share screen button, there it is. And we'll go over to our studio here if I can find that now. Are okay. you seeing my screen there? I am indeed. All right, great. So, um, you know, like you said a moment ago, we've both been uh, been doing some vids on Quarto lately, which is really exciting because there's so much power there and so much flexibility. Um, I'm, uh, I'm currently putting together one on dashboards, which is something that, uh, that Quarto does pretty well and very easily. Um, but I want to show you another thing that I figured out lately or that I discovered lately. I'm going to just start a new project and I'm in the wrong place. I've got to go up to my file menu to new project. And, um, you can pick new directory or existing directory, but down here, just sort of hidden at the bottom for your options for a new project is Quarto book. And Amazing. I thought that's kind of cool that there's just built-in options for making a larger piece of text that's going to have chapters, maybe re a reference file, table of contents, all of these different things. Amazing. And so I'll just call it, I'll call this my book. And um, we'll just go ahead and start this. Ordinarily, I would do a Git repository. I'm not as big a fan of the visual editor as some. I think that's personal taste, but we'll go ahead and do that. And that'll take just one second to, to get up there. And um, it's going to look a little different than some of the other um, Quarto things we've worked on. You're going to get a few different things. First of all, you'll notice we've got a bunch of different files here. Mm -hmm. And um, within the individual Quarto documents, we're missing a usual 
preamble, our usual YAML header. And the reason is because we have a whole file for that, and that's this underscore quarto YML. And um, within this usual YAML header, where you can set all your usual options, like we can change our author to uh, Andrew and Greg, for instance, you've got uh, <laughs> just lists of chapters, and then you'll have a file for each one of those. So for instance, index is um, opened automatically by default, and that's your preface, and that's where you can put all of sort of your front matter. Um, we also have chapters, in this case, by default, intro and summary, and then some references at the end. And, and uh, you can, can just, just render add, any... Add as many chapters as you want? Add as, and I'll, I'll actually add a new one in just a second. Um, and if we just hit render... We're actually going to get a nice little output file in here here in just a second. I will uh, I'll reshare once that comes out. Once I can find the button. <laughs> and you can yeah. see you've got your different chapters here. Introductory, yeah. summary, preface, references. Um, and then you can just click on any of those to go to, um, to whichever one you want. And it's got all the features of Quarto. You know, uh, and just talking about saving and rendering, I think that there is a setting in our studio that oh, yes. allows you to automatically save when you render. Yeah, that's absolutely the case. And you can see there's the, the render on save. Because yeah. I'm zoomed yeah. in, it's not all written out. But yes, it is It is save on render. Render yeah, on save. Brilliant, brilliant. So here's so, a suggestion and oh, yeah. carry on, carry on. Keep oh going. yeah. I was just, you know, it's uh, I was just going to add a chapter, but I don't think it's uh, something you particularly need to see. Yeah. You just go ahead and put in, you know, my new chapter, 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 whatever. You know, chapter two. UMD. Uh -huh. And you've got a new UMD chapter. button and we'll remember to save it because you're right. That was the issue. That's why it still said Nora Jones. And yeah. then you just, you know, make a new uh, Quarto document called, uh, um, my dash chapter, my dash chapter, and right. you don't even need a, a YAML header in there, and it's all gonna it's all gonna render just like you'd want it. Amazing. Um, and you can see you've got your bibliography file here. You can pick your format, and just sort of all your usual YAML header options can go in here. Anyway, nice. Um, nice. I think it's really cool for larger projects. If you ever uh, if you ever well, have that need, he has a suggestion, Andrew. Let's write a book. You and me. I mean, oh, we both love R. We love the content. We have a lot of fun doing this. Uh, let's do it. I feel. I feel like that could go a lot of different directions, man. Are you have like? What do you think? In uh, what do you think should be in a? Let's say in a first book. Well, if, I like the way you're thinking, Andrew. I like the way you're thinking. You know, the one thing I know about both of us is we love the tidyverse. So this whole tidyverse way of thinking yeah. and, and approach to data, and I'd say like a, a nice starting point would be sort of an introductory. Um, this is sort of the basics of how to approach data and how to use some of these tidy oh, like that. packages to manage your data, create good visualization, bit of the data wrangling side of things. What do you think? Yeah, I love it. I um, I particularly like how you, ho I mean, first of all, yes to all of that, but I like how you honed yeah. in on data because I would want this to be sort of data first because I think there's a lot of our viewers, a lot of people out there that... Um, that are working with data, it's just in their work, whether it's in public yeah. health or or whatever business, whatever it might be, and um, just want to be able to do it a little better. They don't yeah. necessarily want to be like programmers, but they want enough to get exactly. stuff done. Not everyone is a coder, uh, and there's a lot of people using R that are other things. I mean, I'm a good example. I'm a medical doctor. I work yeah. in public health. Uh, and yet I love coding, yep. but I'm never going to be a super duper expert, yeah. but it's, you know, I hope to be as good as you one day, Andrew. Uh, uh, I, I was just about to say how non-expert I am also. I mean, my, my background is, is in <laughs> math, up, yeah. which sounds like, sounds like, pro, sounds like statistics. And I just, I don't have formal training in R yeah. either. And so just like you, I'm kind of learning it as I go yeah. for, uh, well. for everything I want to do. Yeah. Well, talking about data, and and by the way, I love the idea of a book. So let's do this. Yeah, let's let's do this. And a nice thing to build into the book is let's use all of the examples in the book. Let's use data sets that are built into R. Yeah, so or or at least things. accessible from sort accessible of publicly package, available right? open packages. I I don't yeah. I wouldn't want to have to post uh, and maintain like Excel spreadsheets on a on a website, even a GitHub. Exactly. So I think if it would be wanna, nice if, if people could just hit the ground running. If people reading the book want to 
replicate and practice the examples that are in the book. All they got to do is it might be already there yeah. in our studio or part of a package. And like for example, when you install a tidyverse boom shakalaka, a whole lot of get a lot. data sets just get stuck yeah. in there, which are great I, to practice. I hope we can get a balance between something that you can, you know, that you can read on the bus or the tube or whatever, and something that yes, then you nice. get, then you, then you get home and you pull out your laptop and you actually run the examples. I'd like to have something that's readable, but has enough yeah. depth where people can really dive yeah. in and, and get something like that is, um, that even goes beyond the stuff that we cover in our sort of five to 10 minute videos. Yeah, perfect. So if you're Sounds watching exciting. this video, if you're watching this video and you think a book from Andrew and myself is a good idea, put something in the comments. Say yeah. yes, say double thumbs up, boom shakalaka, and we will get <laughs> Yeah, I would I would also love to hear what people are particularly interested in having in a book like this. I mean, yeah. we've got some ideas. I think they're good ones, but I mean mm -hmm. it's the readers, the potential readers. That... Yeah. And I like what you said earlier in a first book. Because maybe yeah, we just do yeah. a whole bunch. I mean, yeah. I, I like I love the idea of working with you on this, Andrew. So yeah, um, we'll, we'll talk about this mind. more. Okay. Great. All right, Greg. Always a pleasure. Everybody, check out our programming one hundred and one. Fantastic, uh, our YouTube channel. Yeah, and, and check um, out Equitable Equations, where Andrew has his content. Absolutely love it. You'll learn a lot. Always a pleasure seeing you, Greg. Let's uh, let's talk offline about this uh, about this idea you've got about the book. Yeah, okay. let's do it. take care. Good to All see right. you, Andrew.